welcome back to my channel so today i am going to do a question and answer video i did a poll on my instagram asking you guys if you had any questions about skincare and i got lots of feedback and a lot of questions were the same you know like pros and cons of getting a facial are they really necessary how often should you get them what does spf mean does higher spf mean better protection those are great, 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 great questions. And I can't wait to get into the video. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first question is, how often should you get facials? Well, getting facials depends on many different factors like your skin type and condition, um, your skincare goals and expectations, what your skin needs, how old you are, and also your budget, you know, how much are you willing to spend? So you should get a facial every two to four weeks, four to six weeks, or quarterly. Um, if you have normal dry to combination skin who doesn't really experience any skin issues, you know, hyperpigmentation or you know, breakouts here and there, four to six weeks would be optimal for you. Now, if you are someone that has, you know, oily skin, hyperpigmentation, um, acne prone, you know, comedones, you get breakouts consistently, I would recommend you get a facial every two to four weeks until your skin starts to clear up. And this is also great for if you're trying to combat, you know, hyperpigmentation. Coming regularly will be optimal. And then you have people who have more normal skin, you know, sensitive, who don't really have any skincare concerns, they rarely break out. Um, I would recommend getting facials every four to eight weeks, so quarterly. Now, another factor as to how often you should get a facial depends on your skincare goals. If you want to maintain that clear, glowing, youthful skin, regular visits to your esthetician or dermatologist um, would be the better option. And it also depends on your skincare concerns and what your skin needs, also how old you are, because as we get older, our skin tends to change all the time. So because our skin changes as we get older, our skincare habits and our skincare needs change as well. So your budget. Now your budget really affects a lot of things. So this is really the time and amount and you know just investment that you are willing to put in to take care of your skincare concerns and needs. And it also depends on how often you will be able to go back to your esthetician or dermatologist to get treatments. So say if you don't really know, you know, how often to come back um, or you're just really unsure because of your budget, you know, talk to your skincare professional. We will take a thorough look at your skin and go from there. And we'll also pretty much just kind of work with you and just tell you what's best and what's recommended, how often to come back and give you at home care recommendations. Okay, now someone asked, what are the pros and cons of getting a facial? Good question. So the pros are is that it will, you know, deeply and thoroughly cleanse your skin, get rid of all of those dead skin cells and debris, dirt, oil, because when you're not removing those dead skin cells, your products are not penetrating at all like it should. And if you don't remove them, you can break out even more. So another pro would be extractions. So extractions are extremely crucial. It's a very important part of getting a facial to get rid of, you know, blackheads, whiteheads, comedones. It's kind of almost impossible to do it at home by yourself properly without using the right tools. And also if you do it yourself, you can actually cause more harm than good. So please go to a skincare professional because we have all of the right tools to use and we know what we're doing. <laughs> so another pro is that facials are extremely rejuvenating and it really just brings your skin back to life. It also improves the absorption of, you know, those beneficial ingredients into our skin. And that's actually something I was talking about in my last video, talking about, you know, ingredients and all of that. Be sure to watch it. Um, but anyway, better absorption happens through exfoliation. So when we're getting rid of that dead skin cells, our products penetrate deeper. So without removing that top layer, your skin will remain dull, dry, and rough. But if you do remove it, you are allowing new skin cells to come up from underneath, resulting in healthy, glowing skin. And another pro, and this is definitely one of my favorites, this is by Facial Massage. 
So facial massage really helps you, you know, improve that circulation and blood flow in the skin, helps relieve stress, and by improving circulation and blood flow into the skin that means that you're getting enough oxygen and nutrients that's being carried along in the blood which results in healthier cells and glowing skin and i also mentioned this in my last video but getting facial massages also helps with your mood and anxiety and another pro is that you are receiving expert care you really want to make sure that you're going to a licensed professional um, because it's so important to make sure that you're getting expert advice suggestions opinion to really benefit your skin and address your specific concerns now what are some of the cons well even though you're getting a facial and we are doing extractions and getting everything out it's not permanent it is temporary and it will come back so therefore you will need to come back and get regular treatments so in order to maintain that treatment and that glow you really want to stick to your skincare regimen that we recommend and also follow up with a facial after that to maintain those results because 80 percent is what we do as professionals in the treatment room and 20 percent is what you do at home now another question are getting facials necessary? So for those who have normal skin or you know they don't really have any problems or issues or any skincare concerns, um, I don't really think that it is necessary, but it's also not bad because you will still greatly benefit from it. And it really just also depends on how much you care. You also want to remember that when getting a facial, the aftercare is just as important as getting the facial itself. Like I said before, 80% is what is done in the treatment room and 20% is what you do at home. So in order to maintain those great results, you really want to stick to your skincare regimen and see your esthetician or dermatologist when recommended. For me personally, I love to get facials, you know, every four to six weeks because it really, really benefits my skin and I love it. <laughs> okay, so another question someone asked is, what order do you use toner, moisturizer, serum, and all that stuff, lol? <laughs> Great question. So the first step is cleansing. So cleansing is done to get rid of any dirt, oil, and debris. And then you want to tone because toning really helps to bring the skin back to its pH that it's supposed to be while also adding beneficial nutrients into the skin. Um, if you don't know what pH is, I did make a video on it. So I will link that down below in the description box. Um, the next step after that is exfoliating. So exfoliating really helps you get rid of that dead skin cells so that your products can penetrate like it should. And also really just get rid of all of that bacteria and prevent from future breakouts. And then after that, you are going to use a mask specific to your skin type. And then you're going to use a serum. So serums are great because it's designed to treat specific skincare concerns. And then you want to moisturize. So if you do this backwards, so say for example, you moisturize and then you put your serum. Your serum is not going to penetrate at all because the moisturizer molecule is a lot bigger than the serum. So when you are putting on your products in layers, you wanna go from the smallest molecule to the largest. And last but not least, you want to use S. Okay, another question is, does higher SPF mean better protection? What does SPF mean? Okay, so let's start off with what does SPF mean? Well, it means sun protection factor. So this pretty much means that it measures how long a sunscreen will protect you from ultraviolet B rays aka UVB. These rays damage the outer layer of the skin called the epidermis. And this is pretty much where the most common forms of skin cancer occur. Now, the SPF number tells you how long these UVA rays would take to burn your skin using the product as directed. For example, if you are using SPF 30, it will take you 30 times longer to burn. Same with SPF 15 and so on and so forth. So with SPF 15, it'll take you 15 times longer to burn. Now, it does get a little bit tricky when you're looking at SPF higher than 30, like SPF 100, 
um, 50 or even 80. And if you think about it, a lot of people nowadays are not using SPF like they should be because they're not reading the directions. They're not applying sunscreen the way the instructions um, advise you to use it. So a lot of times when you're at the beach, you know, you can sweat. So when you're sweating it off, you have to reapply. A lot of people nowadays, they're not reapplying. They're not using enough of it, which therefore, if you are using an SPF 30, it may end up protecting your skin more like an SPF 15 based on how you are using the product. So if you're reaching out for an SPF higher than 30, that's, you know, 50, 60, 100, um, you are pretty much allowing more room for human error. So does it really matter if you're using an SPF 50 versus 100 or 30 or 15? Mm, probably not because when you're not applying the product like you should, you know, you're not using enough of it, you're sweating it off and, and you're also not using as much. I mean, even if you are reapplying it, you still have to use the amount that's recommended. So in conclusion, um, reaching out for a higher number would probably be beneficial and allowing a little bit more room for human error. And another important tip, don't just rely on sunscreen to protect your skin from um, getting burnt. You know, make sure that you're wearing sunglasses, wearing protective hats, clothing, and also get some shade. I hope you found this video helpful and that I answered all of your questions. If you do have any other questions, be sure to comment down below, um, DM me on Instagram. I'm starting to post more polls on my Instagram, so you can comment on there or underneath my posts. I love helping you guys out and answering all of your questions and really just being the best help in any way I can. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for future notifications. Also, follow me on all of my social medias. I will list that down in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching and also always remember to be comfortable in your own skin and embrace the essence of you. Bye guys, I'll see you in my next video. Mwah.